What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm out here in the shed today. I'm going to treat my BX to a little bit more uh, lift capacity. For those of you who've watched my loader lift test video, you guys will remember that at the end, I wrote this little sheet out here. And basically in that video, we started out at 1750 PSI for our relief valve pressure, which is generally the spec for what a Kubota BX has when you buy it new. Um, we found out that at the lift height that I lifted it at, it lifted 930 pounds. And then we increased the hydraulic pressure to 2000 PSI and that increased us to 1,080 pounds of lift. So what that means is on average, uh, 250 PSI of a hydraulic increase in pressure can net you 150 pounds increase in lift. And you can see down here that every 10th of a shim nets you about 40 to 50 PSI of an increase. Um, I've been wanting to increase my loader pressure uh, beyond 2,000 for a while, um, just because I wanna try it out personally. Um, I think it could handle it. Um, if I bend something, if I break something, I'm not worried about it because I can fix it. If I bend my loader, if my loader ram blows out, if the hydraulic line blows out, I could fix it. I'm not worried about any of that stuff. Um, I make sure I'm careful when I'm picking up loads. I don't lift them high. Um, you know, I'd be as careful as I can be. And if something does happen, I'm taking that risk myself. So I'm definitely not telling anybody to do this. Um, I said this in the first video, you know, and if you do do it, be very careful and make sure you're properly ballasted because um, it's nothing to mess around with. You don't want to get pinned under the tractor, have a rollover and, and, you know, hurt yourself. So that being said, the one thing that I am worried about or that I would be worried about is the hydraulic pump. I believe the pump on this tractor is located in the transmission. Um, that's why the transmission and the hydraulic front end loader and everything, all that pumps the same fluid because the pump is inside of the transmission and that's where all your hydraulics run through. So that'd be the one thing I'd be worried about um, failing is the hydraulic pump. And the reason that would fail is because the higher you're increasing this um, relief valve, um, you know, the harder your pump has to work to keep that pressure up, you know, before it can finally bleed off and be relieved. So it's putting more strain on your hydraulic pump, that's for sure. Um, you know, would it put more strain on your cylinders and your hoses? You know, definitely. But do I think it's going to be enough where, say I was at 2,500 PSI, do I think it's enough where I'm going to start having ram leaks and, and lines uh, blowing out on me? Definitely not. I mean, these hydraulic lines are rated at 3,000 PSI. I've seen them go a lot higher than that and not blow out. So I'm fairly confident that those will be fine. And like I said, if something does happen where I get a hydraulic cylinder leak or something gets bent or whatever, you guys will be the first to know about it. And then you guys can actually see, you know, what are the capabilities of this tractor, you know? So that's kind of like my... Um, my whole reasoning behind it um and i just i've always wanted to try it out i always felt that the the, the tractor could handle it but i don't know you know I, I really don't know i could do this and i could end up burning up my pump and my transmission and then i'm gonna have to rebuild my transmission so you know there's a lot of risk involved here uh, but i definitely want to try it out so i had a guy that watches my channel subscribe to me uh, his name is tony g he's a really cool dude he uh he actually messages me a lot we talk a lot he's a real nice guy we became pretty good friends um, he had known that I'd been wanting to increase my pressure beyond 2000, but I was out of shims. Um, this is the only reason I haven't went above 2000 and I've been meaning to go and buy more shims, but I, uh, I just haven't had time to do it. Uh, my dealer's like 45 minutes away. And when I do go up there, I usually forget to get them. So he was nice enough. He had some shims left over and, uh, he actually sent these to me. So what we got here is a 0.2 shim, another 0.2 shim and a 0.1 shim. Um, and given by our little cheat sheet that I have here from last time that I wrote out, um, a 10th gives us 40 to 50 PSI. So let's just say a 10th is 50 PSI. This is gonna gain me roughly 250 PSI of increase. So every 0.2, that's 100, 0.2, that's 100, and 0.1, that should be 50, you know, give or take. Um, so that's 250 pounds of an increase for my hydraulic pressure. And from our cheat sheet, again, we can see that 250 pounds um, of an increase last time gained me 150 pounds of an increase in lift. So I'm looking at getting another 250 pounds of uh, hydraulic pressure. So I'm assuming I'm gonna get another 150 pounds of lift. So this could be really beneficial for lifting stone and breaking out, you know, tough material like um, clay and whatnot out of a, you know, out of a dirt pile. So I'm excited to try this out because I do work this thing to death and it would definitely be nice to have a little bit more breakout for us and, um, you know, loader strength. So, um, so we're gonna try this. I'm gonna pull the relief valve out. You guys are gonna watch me. I'm gonna put all three of these shims in and just uh, see what happens. Um, but before I do, let's just test my pressure and just make sure it hasn't dropped since last time. Uh, last time we ended the video, it was at 2000 PSI. I have not tested it since. So let me throw this gauge in real quick and we'll see if we're still at 2000 and then we'll go from there. All right guys, I got my loader pressure gauge installed on my um, loader manifold. 
I got it in the first port there, which should be um, up on your loader joystick. I realized that I could run this to my third function and be a lot easier out on the end of my loader. Um, but since I did this test before right here, I want to do it there again just to make sure it's accurate um, and I don't have any kind of pressure loss. Uh, but that will be another video I'd like to do is to see if there's any pressure loss between your, your hydraulic manifold here for your loader and maybe the manifold out at the end of the loader for your third function valve. Um, I doubt there is, but it'd be kind of curious to see. Um, and then after I get done with all this today, I will be doing another video, seeing what kind of pressure increase I got um, and seeing if my chart over here is accurate, if it can lift, you know, 150 pounds more. Um, but for right now, we'll just increase the pressure. I'm going to start up the tractor and we'll see where we're at here. I'm going to bring the tractor to full revs. This way we get an accurate test like before. Okay, and as you guys can see, I'm still at 2,000 PSI. Um, I might even be a little bit over that, just a touch over that. Um, so that's where I've been running this tractor at now for, I don't know, maybe four months. You guys will have to go back and see when that video um, that I made was when I tested my loader pressure. Um, I want to say it was at least like three, four months ago. So I have not had any issues at all with uh, rams leaking, with my hydraulic lines blowing, with any pump issues in my transmission. Um, hydraulic pump issues, nothing like that. The thing's been working great. I definitely have more power. Um, it feels great, um, but you know, you could always have more. And I'm the kind of guy where I'm never satisfied. I always want more and more. So um, <laughs> we're gonna get these shims placed in this relief valve and uh, we'll check it again. All right, guys, here we are at the back of the tractor. I've got a 22 millimeter socket on a six inch extension, uh, three inch drive. Um, the bolt that I'm going for is this one right here. This is the relief valve. It's a 22 millimeter. Um, there's also a 22 millimeter up here. It's not going to be the upper one. It's the lower one down here. You can see some of the ping is gone because I've had this out a few times. Uh, I'm going to take that out and then we can get our shims in place and see what kind of pressure we got. You will lose a little bit of fluid when you take this out, but it won't be much. The big thing is, is not to lose the spring or any of your shims when you pull it out. So you kind of got to tip it down and be careful as you do, just like that. And there is your relief valve. So we're going to get this up on the bench and install our shims. All right, we're back over at the bench. Here is my relief valve underneath the spring. If you pull it out very carefully, make sure none of them shims stick to the bottom of it. That is your spring and your shims are going to be on the bottom of this. So what I'm going to do is put my spring to the side and I'm going to carefully install each one of these three shims here that Tony was so nice to send me. So there's a point two. There's another point two. And here's a point one. Um, it's funny that the point one is actually solid. I believe they do this because it's such a thin shim that um, making it solid actually gives it some uh, rigidity. Um, so anyway, we're going to drop in the point one. We're going to drop in a point two. And we're going to drop in another point two. So that's a total of 0.5 uh, tenths um, or 5 tenths. Um, and that should give us roughly 250 PSI of a pressure increase for our hydraulic system. I'm hoping this nets me about 150 pounds of increased loader lift. So, all right, now that those are in there, we can put our spring back in place and we can throw this back in the machine. Okay, we're back over at the tractor. I'm gonna carefully install my relief valve without losing any of my shims. To my knowledge, um, you know, I only know maybe one other person that's had their pressure on the Kubota BX at 2200 PSI. And that guy I actually met on a form site and he said he had his at 2200 and that he hadn't had any issues. And this was a couple years ago, um, you know, and since since then, me and him were talking because I was the one that actually made a threat about it. You know, had anybody increased it beyond 2000, 
And uh, I'd gotten a couple people that said that they were at 2200 and didn't have any issues. And um, you know, the whole reason I wanted to know was because I felt that it can do it. Um, so I made that uh, post and after finding a couple people who have done it, um, I figured there's no other way to really know, you know, aside from doing it myself, but knowing that a couple others had already done it, kind of gave me some relief to want to try this myself. Um, and now that I'm more comfortable with the tractor and I've had it for, you know, a few years or so, um, you know, I'm definitely confident that it'll be fine. And if it's not, like I said, I'll fix it. If it breaks, it is what it is. So, okay, so we got that in there. Go ahead and tighten it up. You don't gotta go crazy with this because it is O-ring sealed. Otherwise, you're gonna have a real hard time getting it back out. All right, well, that's in there now. Let's uh, get this thing fired back up and uh, see where we're at. Okay, guys, we got the shims all installed and the relief valve. Um, I'm gonna fire this thing up and we'll take a look at the gauge and see where we're at. to me it looked like it was exactly at 2,250 pounds. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. I will go back and look at the footage. It looked like it was dead center between 2,000 and 2,500. So I'm assuming I'm at around uh, 2,250 pounds, give or take, which is pretty much exactly where I want to be. Um, you know, that's exactly another 250 PSI increase from where I was at. Um, and it should, you know, theoretically um, result in about 150 pounds more lift capacity. Um, for the loader. So I'm really excited to try this out. I have a job this weekend. Hopefully I can take the camera with me. Um, it's going to rain all weekend long, um, you know, Saturday and Sunday. It's a pretty large driveway, but I'm not doing that much stone. I'm just filling a couple low spots. I've got about 18 ton getting delivered tomorrow morning. Um, so hopefully it doesn't rain. If it does, I don't know if I'm going to be able to film it or not because it's going to end up turning out like crap. Um, but I'll take the camera with me guys and I'll definitely try. Um, hopefully we can get one to two more driveway jobs done this year before the snow flies. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, as always, like and subscribe. And aside from that, we'll see you guys in the next one.